Hi, my name is Ruth. I'm a PhD student at the University of York, studying how quantum entanglement can be used in a type of imaging called PET imaging. Hi, my name's Laura, and I'm also a PhD student at the University of York, researching quantum entanglement in PET. PET stands for Positron Emission Tomography. It's a technique doctors use to image metabolic processes inside of the body, so it can be used to find cancerous tumours or to monitor brain activity. PET works by injecting a radio tracer into the body. This is commonly an isotope of fluorine attached to some kind of sugar. It travels around the body and gets absorbed into the tissue, accumulating in areas with particularly high metabolic processes. In other words, these are the parts of the body where there's a lot going on. So, for example, cancerous tumours. The radioactive atom then decays, producing a positron, which is the antiparticle of an electron. The positron will travel a couple of millimetres before annihilating with a nearby electron. The annihilation process produces two photons, which will always travel in opposite directions. These photons are detected by placing the patient inside a big ring of detectors. When we get two photon hits at the same time, we assume they came from the same event. We can then draw a line between the two hits, and we know that somewhere along this line is where the decay took place. We call this line a line of response. When enough of these lines have been collected, we can start to reconstruct an image of what's going on inside the body. Now this is the ideal scenario. When the photons are detected cleanly like this, we call it a true event. The photons exit the body, interact with nothing, and then are immediately detected inside the scanner. What can actually happen is that one of the photons scatters and changes direction before it's detected. Photons can scatter in the patient, in the air, on the table, even in the detector itself. And when this happens, the line of response between the two hits is now offset from where the decay actually took place. The other issue that can occur is random coincidence. If two decays happen at almost exactly the same time, it's possible you'll detect one photon from one decay, one from the other, and then when you draw a line between your two photons, it's again pointing to the wrong location. These incorrect lines of response create noise and artefacts in our final images. Unfortunately, for a full body PET scan, 30 to 50% of all the events we detect can be these scattered events, and that is a huge fraction. So as a result, PET scans tend to be noisy with bad spatial resolution. It's hard to see a lot of detail. Hospitals often try and correct for this by combining PET scans with other types of scans, like CT or MRI. These scans produce structural images of the body, which highlight bones and particularly dense areas. It just happens that these areas are those most likely to scatter photons, so we can then use these images to correct our PET scans. It works very effectively, but it takes a long time and may require exposing the patient to even more radiation. Here's where our research comes in. Our idea is to use quantum entanglement to remove these unwanted noisy events. Remember that the two PET photons are produced in the same event, when the positron and the electron annihilate with each other. So this means that they are quantum entangled. Anything that happens to one of my photons is going to instantly affect the properties of the other. Einstein called this spooky action at a distance. So, how do you measure entanglement? Our method looks at the way the photons behave when they hit the detector. When each photon hits the detector, it's quite likely to scatter at some angle, let's call it phi. We're interested in the difference between the angles for the two photons. Let's call that delta phi. If the photons are entangled, delta phi looks like a cosine function, which means it's much more likely the photons scatter at right angles to each other than in the same direction. But if the photons are not entangled, then there's no relationship at all between the angles. The photons are equally likely to scatter at any angle, so delta phi is flat. So we should be able to use this information to work out which of the detected photons we should use for our image. So let's see what this quantum entanglement looks like on a detector. We don't have a full PET scanner, but we do have pairs of detector arrays just like you'd find on the opposite sides of a PET scanner. The detectors are made up of four arrays, like this one, each with an 8x8 grid of crystals. When a gamma ray photon enters the crystal, it deposits its energy, and we can turn this into an electrical signal. 
We can represent our detectors using these 16 by 16 screens. Let's use the screens to look at some of our data. During a PET scan, we would be receiving lots of simultaneous hits across the detector pairs due to the back-to-back -back photons emitted from the PET source. Sometimes, not all of the energy of the photon is deposited in one crystal. The remaining energy can escape and hit a second crystal. This gives us the angle phi 1, which Ruth mentioned. We are really interested in the events where this happens in both our detectors, so we have a total of four hits, the two back-to-back -back and the two escapees, phi 1 and phi 2. We want to compare the directions of the escapee photons, as this will tell us about the entanglement of the back-to-back -back photons. If one of the escapee photons travels in a certain direction, we want to look at what the other escapee photon does. To do this, we're going to pick a spot on this detector where the original photon from the PET source arrives and set phi1, the direction that the escapee photon goes from here. For example, the back-to-back -back photon arrives in the middle and the escapee goes horizontally. Then we know that the first hit on the other screen will also be in the middle because they are back-to-back. -back. Every time this happens, we will look at where the other escapee went, measuring phi 2. We see this circle forming, all the possible directions the photon could scatter to. However, the circle is not the same brightness all the way around. It has light and dark spots on it, which means that more of the photons went in some directions than others. This is the result of the photons being entangled. We're seeing the cos2 delta phi that Ruth explained, but this time shown in 2D. When we decided that the first escapee was going horizontally, quantum entanglement made it much more likely that the other would go vertically, since the cos2 delta phi has a maximum at 90 degrees. Even if the detectors were at the opposite ends of the universe, we would still see this enhanced correlation. That's what Ruth meant when she talked about the spooky action at a distance. Up until 2024, physicists believed that when one of the photons scattered before reaching the detector, the entanglement between them was likely to be broken. So we did an experiment to test this. We looked at cases where one of the back-to-back -back photons scattered before it reached the detector. The results of the experiment showed that almost identical patterns on the screen, even when the prior scattering was large, which means the entanglement is surprisingly robust. So, how could this help in medical imaging? First thing to do is find delta phi, the difference between the angles for all the photon pairs we detect. And as expected, this has a nice cosine shape. We can then reconstruct an image. For this first image, we're only going to use events with delta phi around zero. So these are the events we think are least likely to be entangled. So if we only use these photons, we can expect the image to look pretty bad. You can see five bright circles where the radioactive sources are, but the image is blurred and noisy. Now, if we reconstruct the same image, but use events with a slightly higher delta phi, then we expect a higher fraction of good events. And indeed, the image is a bit clearer. We can do this again for different delta phi sections all the way up to 90 degrees. These are the events we think are most likely to still be entangled. And indeed, the image gets much clearer with better contrast and less noise. This method is very effective for removing the random coincident events. And our new discovery that scattered events are still entangled means that instead of removing these events, we can recycle them. We're exploring ways to train artificial intelligence and machine learning networks to use this quantum information from the scattered photons. Their entanglement helps us infer what the photons did inside the patient before arriving at the detector, potentially allowing us to create maps from the scattering locations. This may increase diagnostic sensitivity of PET scans and reduce the necessary radiation dose to the patient, and could potentially remove the need for expensive, time-consuming additional scans such as CT or MRI. So, quantum entanglement could give us clearer images in less time with a lower radiation dose, better for the patient 
and the NHS.